Welcome everyone to One Warrior Wrestling USA, live as always from the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. And we are getting started here tonight with some tag team action as the new ragtag group of Acer and Jasper Star, known as Stars and Strikes. Make their debut. And while we know relatively little about this Acer character, Jasper Star does have one match that we have heard of before, and it is in a little tournament called BAMF, which we know to be a battle of hardcore wrestling so for him to walk out on the other side is definitely a testament to his strength will he be able to carry acer to a win here tonight against los eos del Doragon? Here we have Cesar Samuels and Cazador Jr. These two were instrumental in the establishment of 1WW USA. Of course, their father, the late great Cazador Dragon, helped pioneer the junior heavyweight style of wrestling in the original One Warrior Wrestling. And they helped get it off the ground, but they were very adamant in saying, we don't want to have any part of the backstage. We don't care how you run it. All we want is a place where we can wrestle. And that's what we do here in 1WW USA is wrestle. We are starting off with two incredible tag teams. And if I'm Gavin Daniels and if I'm El Rey Del Air, I am watching this match like a hawk to see who a possible future contender could be. Single fall to a finish here. Tornado rules. Cesar Samuels went for an interesting attack there, but Acer managed to block him out. Big backbreaker there by Jasper Star and a huge power bomb by Cesar Samuels. Cesar, the most decorated of the men in this match, a former world champion in a different place in a different time. But right now just getting worked over by this new hotshot Acer. Gazdor Jr. looks to take it to the outside with Jasper Star. A flawlessly executed drop kick there. Cesar kicks the leg out of the leg of Acer and goes to the middle rope. Gazdor Jr. eyeing Jasper Star. Look at the power by Acer into a spiral bomb on Cesar Samuels. Fantastic display by the rookie. Jasper Star now pulling him in. Goes for a belly to belly on Cazador Jr. Gets side headlock takeover for his troubles. Cesar has Acer up, but Acer laying in those unguarded elbow shots to the side of the head. And a big scoop and slam. Shining elbow as well as a Falcon Arrow is done in by Cazador Jr. Of course, no limits in these Tornado tag team matches as Cazador Jr. grabs a Singapore cane, a weapon being used on Jasper Star as Acer is slowing it down on the outside with Cesar in tow, focusing in on that leg. Cesar Samuels with a Yoshi tonic on the floor. Devastating offense there and a standing shooter as well from the son of the great. Cazador Dragon. Jasper Star procured a baseball bat but was unable to use it. As Acer grabs that Singapore cane and Cesar taunting him, begging him to come back in. 
to the ring, and Ace are gonna give him exactly what he wants, drilling him on the top rope. So far, Stars and Strikes have been quite impressive as a flying back elbow is evaded there by Cesar and the punches laying in. Fantastic uppercut into the Strikes. And on the outside, Casador Jr.'s arm could be in trouble at the hands of Jasper Star. Acer has been all over Cesar Samuels like a cheap suit. But Cesar firing in the Strikes, Snapmare and a big kick in the back. And Cesar Samuels now becomes the third man to look for something under the ring. He pulls out a sledgehammer. And it looks like he's going to work with demolition. But Acer manages to block him. And a dragon suplex on the hammer. Good lord. That is brutal. PK from Acer. Pulls him in. Keep your eyes on Jasper Star. Acai DDT. Shades of Ultimo Dragon. Fantastic a shot there by Cesar who looks to fly. And he nails him with the splash, but Acer got the knees up. Cazador Jr. sensing that his brother's in trouble perhaps. Looking to help him, but he just goes after Jasper once again. Jasper Star has that cross face chicken wing locked in as Cazador Jr. is struggling. Acer hits a dragon suplex. Goes for the pin on Cesar, but only gets the one. That was a tight one for Los Eos del Dragon. And a big penalty kick there by Acer. Cesar has definitely been on the back foot here, but inadvertent sent on onto Jasper Star. Left him wide open for that shots to the face by Acer. Acer with the Prince Kong knee drop. And he's in the corner looking for something big on Cesar Samuels. But Cazador Jr. may have other plans. Goes for the drop kick. Nobody home. He saw Cazador Jr. at the last possible second. And I think it threw him off his game. It is two on one on Acer here. But it doesn't matter. Poison Rana from Acer. Poison Rana nailed flush and furious. Big drop kick to the side of the head as Jasper takes down Cesar. Goes for the cover on Cazador Jr. Could that seal the deal? And it will not. Cazador Jr. managing to escape. And goes for the flying back elbow, but nobody home. Cazador Jr. with a vicious smack right in the face. And a Yoshi tonic as Cesar hits a flawless Frankensteiner on the floor. Casador Jr., keep your eyes on the high flyer. Tornado to Acer. Jasper Star a mile away. Is that going to do it? No, it's not. Acer manages to kick out of the Tornado. Big German suplex and Jasper Star's head clattering into the steel steps at ringside as Casador Jr. looks to rethink his strategy a bit. And Cesar Samuels getting his money's worth out of the ringside area. Cazador Jr. has procured a table from under the ring. This has gotten violent in a hurry. Cesar grabbing a steel folding chair as Acer looking to use the ring as a weapon. And he does with pinpoint accuracy. And the kendo stick shattered over Cazador Jr.'s corpse. And Cesar Samuels now throws Jasper Star, who managed to regain his composure, nearly went straight into the steps. And Cesar just showing off here, trying to taunt Jasper Star in. Big forearm smash. And this one is definitely exploring the space that we have here in the One Warrior Wrestling Dojo. Cesar up to the top. Cazador Jr. has Acer distracted. Big splash there by Cesar Samuels. Is that going to do it? Not quite. Jasper Star kicks out of the frog splash. Cesar looking to maybe go for it a second time. And he nails it a second time. But this time, 
Acer could be in for the break though. Casador Jr. right there to stop Acer and Acer's inexperience costing him. That should have been an easy pick for Acer to get the break up there, but he could not quite get it. And that opened the door for Cesar to win. So a fantastic performance here tonight. And as we get into our next contest, it is time to determine who will make up one of the finalists in the Dragon Warrior Championship Tournament for next week's finale. We know that next week is already promised to be a humongous show with a Texas death match for the One Warrior Wrestling Heavyweight Championship and a 15 minute Iron Man match for whoever makes it to the finals. We will determine both finalists here tonight. But we are starting off with Wade Urena and Johnny Beginnis, who got to this point in pretty much polar opposite ways. Wade Urena had a slugfest of a match last week with Kyle Moore. Ending with Wade Urena being bloodied but victorious. Johnny Beginnis picked up in what many people consider to be a shock win over David Gardner in about five minutes. So they definitely did not have comparative journeys to this point. Johnny Beginnis though is definitely going to be the one in better shape heading here. Only seven days since their last matchups here in 1WW USA means that they have had barely any time to rest or recuperate. For Johnny Beginnis, didn't have much to recuperate, but Wade Urania, you have to wonder if those stitches are even healed up or if that cut could be reopened, especially if Johnny Beginnis chooses to interject another knee like he used to put away David Gardner just last week. Johnny Beginnis, though, soaking it all in. The self-professed godsend of pro wrestling. Definitely has a lot of potential, especially if he can make it all the way to the finals. I think that a guy with the conditioning of Johnny Beginnis would fare well in that 15-minute Iron Man format. But it will ultimately all come down to whether or not he can withstand the power of big old Wade Urena and his devastating discus and gravy lariat. So Wade in one corner, Johnny Beginnis in another. And Beginnis immediately controlling Wade's size to his advantage, but Wade not gonna let that happen for too long. Gonna try and get back on the offensive. He's got that guard up though. He is especially guarding that left eye where he sustained that nasty cut. Beginnis is strong, but he isn't strong enough to manhandle big old Wade quite yet. Wade's gotta be more proactive though. He just lays in those forearm shots to the back. And a fist drop as well. Wade Urena grabbing Johnny Beginnis and just nailing him with a big Argentine neckbreaker. Goes for the cover. Nearly gets a two out of it already, showing just how devastating the power of Wade Urena is. And Wade laying in that snap jab to stunt all of Beginnis' momentum. Wade, like I said, went through war last week with Kyle Moore, whereas Johnny Beginnis comparatively had a nice sprint through the park. Another big fist drop to Johnny Beginnis. 
Wade Urena is just laying in everything here, but McGinnis with that big knee to the stomach. And look at the strength lifting up the 364 and 3 8 pounder and dropping him on the top rope. Johnny McGinnis, though, nailed with a dragon skirt. And again, back to that fist drop. Wade Urena keeping it simple. And he is definitely reaping the rewards. Johnny McGinnis having to be a little more flashy with the power that he's been showing off. But it is certainly impressive as he hits that power slam. Another cover and another one count. They are getting closer and closer to two. But this definitely does not feel like it's close to crescendoing. As Wade Urena interjects that elbow. Notice neither of these men wear elbow pads. Wade Urena opting to not even wear knee pads. Definitely some dangerous intentions implied there. Wade Urena went for the kick, and that right there is why those lack of knee pads can come to haunt you. Johnny McGinnis, the power once again with the Liger Bomb this time. McGinnis not done. He may be looking for another one, but Wade Urena knew what was coming. That deadlift power bomb, followed by the bicycle knee, is such a devastating combination. Standard knee there from McGinnis. Johnny McGinnis booted away by Wade Urena, and Wade looking to use some of that weight in a standard camel clutch here. Wade Urena, nothing fancy. Just trying to deal some damage to the neck and spine of Johnny Beginnis, who has to use every bit of his power to fight out of that one. And more power on display with that Uranagi, and then the penalty kick for extra damage. Big cross body, nearly snapping Beginnis in half. Went for the fist drop, but fourth time lucky. Beginnis gets out of the way. Good lord. Look at that, Wade Urena. Flipped inside out by Johnny Beginnis. And Beginnis paying back some of those fist drops with those vicious rights and even a smack in the face. And Johnny Beginnis has him locked in a prism trap here. Will Wade Urena tap out? We have never seen big old Wade submit before. But this may be a first time. Look at that agility though. Never expected Wade Urena to be able to pull something like that out. And then a German suplex to reset the parable. Wade Urena picks him up and Johnny Beginnis counters. Wade Urena with a gum and Geary. These two are showcasing an incredible variation of wrestling acumen that I personally was not expecting. Wade Urena just applying the double magna to Johnny Beginnis. McGinnis with the shoulder tackle though. Wade Urena trying to get back to his feet. And the spear went a little lower that time, intercepted him. And I think that's gonna seal it. No, Wade Urena kicks out of that spear. But Johnny McGinnis picking his way around now, worked on the arm, now dragging him a little bit, trying to get him into a better position perhaps. A penalty kick, and now goes again. But Wade's back up, and another cross body just flattens him back to the fist drop that brought him to the dance, and Wade Urena, this is how he won last week, this Yakuza kick. Looking for it again, and no! Johnny manages to back away. <laughs> it's a release face buster. Kick from Johnny Beginnis. Tiger Driver, 92, on to Wade Urena. Goes for the cover, and is that gonna seal it? It's not. Wade Urena fighting for the opportunity to challenge for the Dragon Warrior Championship next week, but he is just getting split apart. And that's gotta seal the three for Beginnis. No, Wade Urena showing that he's got the heart of a warrior. But Beginnis may be picking away at Wade Urena. Look at that power from Urena, that very interesting double underhook face buster. 
And that is not enough to seal it, but Beginners definitely feeling the, the effects of that interesting power on display. And Wade's got to go back to old reliable. Discus and no! Countered and got franchised. Johnny Beginnis knew the counter. Target the leg. And is that going to do it? Wade Urena barely able to kick out, but Beginnis played a smart strategy. Urena and Beginnis lands neck first on the ropes. And Wade Urena smelling blood is going to try and pick him apart. Johnny Beginnis going blow for blow with Wade Urena, but Urena just too strong. And that fist drop once again has been so damaging for Wade Urena, but Johnny gets right up and splits him down the middle. And it took a lot, but Johnny Beginnis gets the win and will find his way to the finals. Johnny Beginnis certainly didn't have as easy a ride this week as he did last week. But now he has found his place in the finals. And we will find out shortly if he will meet Principe Mascara or CC Chambers. We already know Johnny Beginnis is going all the way to the finals. Now it's time to figure out who will meet him next week. Will it be the Triple C, CC Chambers, or will it be Principe Mascara? CC Chambers got here last week in winning a very unconventional matchup against Johnny Gemini. CC Chambers and Johnny Gemini went out there and had a slugfest of a matchup, never until the bitter end giving out an ounce of quit. CC Chambers managed to weather the storm, pick up the win with the Styles clash. Now he finds himself in the semi-finals. But will CC Chambers become the correct answer to the question, who is the inaugural Dragon Warrior Champion here in 1WW USA? Or will Principe Mascara look to play spoiler? to be Mascara, a lot of people claim that he doesn't take this seriously, that he relies on late game comebacks to be one of the best. And I mean, if last week was the only match of his you ever watched, that may be true, but Prince B. Mascara has a lot of talent, and I know for a 100% fact that Prince B. Mascara could definitely go all the way. We're talking about how Johnny Beginnis earlier, his conditioning may make him a prime candidate for the Iron Man match, but between these two, I would have my money on Principe if he makes it to the finals. But that's a pretty big if, as CC Chambers has just been on a roll everywhere we've seen him as of late. CC Chambers looking ready for action. Principe Mascara much the same. It's time to set the finals. And CC looking to start off with a standard gourd buster. And now off the ropes. Went for a drop kick, but Principe had that scouted. Two very evenly matched in terms of size, weight, height, wrestling style. CC, I'd say, leans a little more American technical to Principe's Lucha Libre, but definitely have similar high-flying backgrounds.
Principe Mascara eats that big ripcord knee. We've seen CeCe, he just un unleashes a load of high impact maneuvers. But then his finishing maneuver, the Styles c, c clash very deliberate. And you see him try to slow it down a little bit and he pays the price as Principe moves out of the way. Mayo Rana to CeCe Chambers. And Principe going to Asai DDT, but it's countered into an Oklahoma stampede. And Principe with that kick off the ropes and a punch in the face. CeCe tried to counter it, but Principe still got some of it. And a shooting star press off the top goes for the cover. And nearly gets the three on the young gun. Principe now wasting a lot of valuable time in the showboat, but dealing a little bit of damage as a result. And I'm now looking to deal some more damage as he lays in those stomps and a standing shooting star that time. Goes for a second and CeCe gets the knees up. CeCe Chambers needs to get back into this one in the worst way. We know how deadly Principe Mascara can be if he gets on a roll with that drop salt. CeCe trying to get back into it. Tornado kick! Nearly took Principe's damn head off. And now has him hooked for the Styles clash on Mascara. But I don't know if he's done enough damage cumulatively in this match and it proves that he hasn't. That right there is why you can't just rely on your big moves. A match is all about building up consistent offense which CC Chambers simply hasn't done. He's gonna have to go back to the well one more time and while we've yet to see Prince B. Mascara bust out his big maneuvers, he may not have the similar fate. Back suplex on the apron is a great way to start though. And then targeting the arm may seem like an interesting strategy against a high flyer, but you have to think when Prince B goes for those rope spring attacks, when he goes to climb the buckles, definitely going to be harder to do as a one-armed man. CC Chambers exploring the space here, looking for a pump handle, and CC dead weighted by Prince B Mascara. There's that experience factor coming in once again. That's what makes One Warrior Wrestling USA so interesting. We have such a difference in dichotomy between the experienced veterans and the young guns. Big uppercut and Principe. Oh goodness. His head barely missing the steps but his shoulder connected with the entirety of the barrier. And CC Chambers just like that. The momentum swings. And CC tossed once again, tumbling hard onto that right shoulder. The Kawada kicks on the outside. And Principe Mascara has done an incredible job of negating whatever momentum CC had. Monkey flip on the floor after those vicious kicks that you could hear from the cheap seats. Principe tossing CC back into the ring. Definitely has his eye on a quick victory here. Has him hooked. Ron Hay from Principe. And nearly gets the win. CC forced to kick out with that shoulder that went straight into the barrier. Very smart by Principe Mascara. Back elbow by CC Chambers, but Principe still remains in control as he has for a decent majority of this matchup. CC Chambers sweeps the leg out from under him. CC Chambers, tornado kick, toe to the nose. Is that gonna do it? I don't think it will personally because CC has not been on the offense in so long. That's not to discredit what CC Chambers has done, what he will do, what he's capable of doing in this matchup but he's got to be more consistent on the offense if he wants to even have a hope in hell of putting away Prince B. Mascara. Tried to bait him in, but couldn't quite do it. Drops Prince B. Mascara on the top rope. Maybe enough to stun him for a moment, but will Prince B. be able to get out of this predicament? Dropped with the Styles Clash once again. 
and CC nearly moved on. Those big moves are playing him well, but CC Chambers has got to stay on him. Back elbow from Principe Mascara. Picks him up. Death Valley bomb by Mascara is a fantastic offensive maneuver. And then the moonsault off the top as well. Principe caught by CeCe who hits a big dragon screw there. But a high kick from Principe gets him back in with a standing shooter. And going back to that shoulder that he slammed right into the barrier. Principe is just picking CC apart here and it is paying off well when he does. Principe to the top, Phoenix splash, what distance. Is that gonna seal the three? No, CC kicks out of the Phoenix splash. Principe Mascara needs to try and put away CC Chambers here. But we saw how much of a struggle Johnny Beginnis had earlier in the night putting away. Wait, Urena, what a punch! And then the tornado kick out of nowhere. But CC Chambers couldn't get it done off the tornado. Principe slow to rise, but CC knows what he wants. Third time lucky. The style, style, styles, clash, clash, clash. And the three for CC Chambers. He weathered the storm. He got the win. And he will find himself staring across from Johnny Beginnis next week in an Iron Man match. Fantastic performance by the young gun as we move into our next contest. And as we get into our next contest, we have a very interesting match lined up for you. As Dan Darnester, one half of the King's Road, takes on one half of the tag team champions, the doubles champions, excuse me, Gavin Daniels. Gavin Daniels not being accompanied by El Rey Del Air. And he actually took to the backstage area before his matchup to say, I specifically requested that El Rey Del Air not weigh me down out here. Because I know that I can get it done on my own, unlike him. So definitely some contentious words in regards to his own tag partner from one half of the doubles champions. Dan Darnester, on the other hand, coming off of a victory as a part of the King's Road over Dr. Wrestling Jr. medical practice last week in what would go on to be one of the most brutal tag matches we've seen in some time. Dan Darnester and the Emerald Tiger as a part of the King's Road definitely may use this matchup as a scouting process especially against someone like Gavin Daniels, who clearly doesn't sound like he's putting his entire effort into this one. Almost flippant Dan Darnester is, but Gavin Daniels makes his way down the aisle with his championship around his waist. But he certainly doesn't look like he is any worse for wear not having El Rey Del Air out here. The punk rock paradox. Looking to make a statement at the expense of Dan Darnester. Of course it was Gavin Daniels who secured the pinfall victory for himself and El Rey Del Air to win those championships. But they are the furthest thing possible from friendly with one another. 
wouldn't even say it's an exaggeration to say that they hate each other and are more teaming with one another out of some unknown bond that we can't quite put our fingers on. Saw Gavin there regularly liking to trash talk the camera saying don't need him, never needed him. Emphatic words. But he needs to focus on Dan Darnester, who is no joke, especially with that darn dropkick looming. Dan Darnester stares across from Gavin Daniels. Let's get into this one. And Gavin grabbing Darnester, throwing him right into the referee. Went for, it looked like a springboard attack, but Darnester clocked him and got him with that burning lariat. Already, Dan Darnester looks like he may be brining. Nails it on Gavin Daniels. And pulling Gavin in for that spine buster. And Gavin's hubris is already costing him as Dan Darnester is just lighting him up here. Dan Darnester, though, cannot afford to let Gavin get rolling. Because an angry Gavin Daniels, as we've seen in the past, is a man possessed. A hit right to the chest, proof positive, and a kick right to the leg. This is turning into a striking affair. Neither man able to get any form of advantage, it would seem, as they go back and forth, just trying and ultimately failing to get an advantage on one another. Gavin finally manages to hoosh Dan Darnester to the outside. But this is definitely not a friendly exchange or an exchange filled with respect. Gavin went for the Yakuza, but Dan managed to absorb it now on the barrier. But Gavin once again countered by Darnester. Both of these men just slipping out of each other's grasps continuously and Gavin wants to take it back to the outside with a huge hot shot. Darnester falling to the floor and Gavin trying to determine what path he needs to take. The pure striking has not led him to any advantage against Dan Darnester, which is normally Gavin's ball game as he hits that Yakuza kick out of the wrist lock. You know, Gavin Daniels definitely has the capability to be a high flyer. We've seen him display power in the past, but striking is the name of his game. And now he's just being smash mouth with his audacity, that big face wash. And now just taunting Dan Darnester with this camel clutch, trying to make him humble a little bit. But Gavin's hubris once again coming to bite him. Darnester wants to get back in the ring. Gavin not quite ready to go back in. And continuing to just have some fun at the expense of Dan Darnester. We've already seen in this match what happens when Gavin Daniels doesn't take Dan Darnester seriously. And it nearly bit him once again. Dan Darnester in a bad way as Gavin just slams his leg down and not just choking. The leader of the pickle parade on the outside. You hear the fans chanting, darn, as Gavin is just trying to strangulate him. Good Lord, at what point does this become egregious and the ref may need to step in? James Jackson just watching on as Gavin Daniels just takes apart Dan Darnester, slamming him back into the barrier. Before getting back in the ring, and almost just testing him to get back in. Seeing if Dan Darnester even has the capability to do that. Gavin Daniels is playing such an interesting game. Has ice water in his veins. And now Dan Darnester may have baited Gavin back out and Gavin may have paid with that one right there. Dan Darnester back on the inside now and he slides back out and Gavin looking to give him some more for a suplex, no, a sit out gourd buster on the floor. And Gavin Daniels once again going back to the arm of Dan Darnester. <coughs> Slamming Darnester into 
The ring post. Darty with the back elbow. And he's looking for it on the outside. Oh my goodness, has him up. Gavin Daniels, what is Darnie looking for here? Gavin flips to his feet. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that these two may be confused that this match is false count anywhere with how much time they've spent on the outside of the ring. But Dan Darnester slides back in. Gavin mercifully looks like he's heading back in. And he's got Dan Darnester up. London calling from Gavin. Two. Darnester kicks out. And was that an attempted London calling we saw from Dan Darnester on the outside? Gavin eats a vicious forearm, but gives one back in kind. Gavin grabbing Darnester and hitting him with a knee in the face. Gavin has been anything but amenable to Darnester's shenanigans in this match. He has just been picking him apart systematically. Each one of these strikes like a surgeon's scalpel cutting into Dan Darnester. And Darnester looks like he may have been busted open by that boot scrape. And Gavin hurling an insult at him. Runs in, what a lariat from Darnester though. Kind of shocked that Darnester's blood is even red. I expected it to be lime green, or I guess pickle green. But Dan Darnester, he's looking for it. Darnmanada from Dan Darnester. Did Gavin play around a little too much? Tough to say. But Dan Darnester got that big Darnminator. That Darn drop kick to Gavin Daniels. This could be the upset of the century if Darnester can get the win. But Gavin kicks out of that Darn drop kick. He's going three for three on his big moves. He's hit the Darnminator. He's hit that Darn drop kick and he hits the brining elbow. What more does he have? In the tank, Gavin Daniels. Blockbuster from Darnester. He is hitting him with everything, including the kitchen sink. Gavin Daniels may have wasted too much time off the ropes and the brining elbow once again. Gavin right back up, runs in and shotgun drop kicks him to next week. Good Lord. That is called a momentum killer. Gavin not able to get the three off of it, but he is definitely angry at Dan Tarnester. London's calling for the second time. And Tarnester kicks out of London's calling. Gavin is fuming at this point. Gavin Daniels has nothing but contempt for Dan Darnester. But Darnester surviving. And some may even say thriving. Gavin back to his feet. Kicks Darnester. Goes for the DDT. But nobody home. Darnie picks him up. That Darn drop kick for the second time. That's got to be it, right? Gavin played around for too long. And Dan Darnester got the win. Dan Darnester picks up the win over Gavin Daniels. Gavin Daniels definitely had that one in the bag, but he just played around for too long. And Darnester, when it's time to get serious, there's nobody better. And as we get into our main event of the evening, we've got a very interesting matchup for you. As Michael Young and his triple six dojo take on Dylan Hyatt 
and making a guest appearance here, Alex Clark and Jamie Clark. Michael Young and Dylan Hyatt next week will go to war in a Texas death match. No DQ, no pinfall. The only way to win is to make your opponent submit. But tonight, it is a three on three matchup, a six man tag. Michael Young bring in his star protégés, Kieran Cullsworth and Iku Atami. We saw a few weeks ago in losing bids mind, but still impressive. Michael Young looking very confident. But he's going to have to take on a bona fide dream team here tonight. Out first is our one Warrior Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, Dylan Hyatt. The first man to hold that championship, defeating Michael Young for it. But Dylan this may be one of the last times he enters with it. It could be a relatively short reign. Michael Young has anything to say about it. Dylan Hyatt, of course, son of a legendary One Warrior Wrestling professional wrestler, Axel Hyatt. Axel never won the heavyweight championship. Dylan did it in his first attempt. And Dylan has maybe called on some unconventional friends. Both of these men, neither of them are even signed to One Warrior Wrestling USA. They are simply making guest appearances. Out first is Alex Clark. You can see right there, he's even got a championship of his own. What it is, I do not know. But Alex Clark, a multiple time champion. And he is soaking it in. Alex Clark. Definitely a valuable ally for Dylan Hyatt to have and someone who Michael Young is very familiar with. Of course, it was Alex that Dylan defeated for his first championship in wrestling. Alex Clark definitely Someone who has earned his stripes in the wrestling industry as well. So will he be able to help Dylan Hyatt in this six-man tag match? It will certainly be interesting to see. But he's not the only Clark out here tonight. Unfortunately, we could not get Cassidy Clark here. But we did get the prodigal son, Jamie Clark, in the flesh. Jamie Clark, a man who has forged a legacy of lariats. Makes his way to One Warrior Wrestling. First time that these people have seen him here in One Warrior Wrestling, and as I said, not signed, simply doing a favor to a fellow second generation wrestler in Dylan Hyatt. And it's going to be quite interesting for Jamie Clark to be staring across from Michael Young. But I think that Jamie, Alex, and Dylan, they very well may be the best shot to contend against Mikey and his triple six cohorts. Jamie 
Jamie Clark eyeing his own championship gold. A very decorated side of the ring. The only one of those championships sanctioned and recognized by One Warrior Wrestling. The one held by Dylan Hyatt. Certainly never a bad thing to gain an extra 20 pounds in the form of gold, platinum, and diamonds. And it's time for the pageantry to end and the brutality to begin. This is elimination style. Mikey with the 585 to Dylan. Immediately, nearly got the win, got the elimination on Dylan right away with that 585. That's how dangerous that move is. These men are all starting out hot and heavy. Mikey is just trying to get Dylan out of here as quick as he possibly can. He wants to embarrass. The heir to the Hyatt throne. And that forearm smash by Jamie Clark there. Devastating snap, German. This one's hard to keep up with, but Alex up and over by Kieran Colesworth. Dylan off the ropes. Caught by Mikey as Jamie takes on Iku Atami. And a big boy sent on by Mikey. And Iku Atami managing to counter Jamie a little bit there. German on the floor. And a ripcord lariat to Iku Atami as Dylan is dumped out by Michael Young. And a 585 by Jamie. Goes for the cover on Iku Atami, nearly gets the elimination. Mikey's got a dragon sleeper locked in on Dylan Hyatt on the floor. What started out as what many people thought was a professional rivalry, Michael Young clearly taking it very personally that he lost to Dylan Hyatt. As he has just been all over him. Iku Atami, what is he looking for here? DDT on the apron to Jamie and Alex Clark does something similar to Garrett Colesworth. This has been a brutal matchup, my God. I keep the German on the floor and all six men battling at ringside. Alex back in, Karen back in, Dylan back in, Mikey back in, Iku back in. Mikey looking for another 585 and he, no! Dylan countered it! Dylan knew the counter. And he got him done. He's saying it's over. He wants Mikey. Big drop kick countered by Mikey. Iku kicking out there. Mikey grabbing Dylan Hyatt. Tiger driver. Alex Clark with a crossroads. Dylan Hyatt is the first eliminated courtesy of Michael Young. That is huge, not just for this matchup, but for Michael Young's chances. Kieran Colesworth taking a bullet for Michael Young there. It's now three on two, the Clarks versus triple six. Alex looking to take Kieran down, but Kieran just bucked him right over. Alex kicking out at one. Iku going for the cover on Jamie. Jamie barely surviving. Alex in a bad spot. Caught with that interesting maneuver by Kieran Colesworth. Alex still fighting from behind. Kieran looking for it a second time. And he nails it on Alex. Alex is out of there and then there was Jamie. And Mikey has been settling scores in this one. 
took out Dylan, and now maybe taking some shots at his former protege, Jamie Clark, saying, I've got a new class of students. This is just a gang beating. This isn't even wrestling. Jamie Clark is just getting beat the hell up. Pile driver by Kieran Colesworth. Goes for the cover and gets the win. That right there was triple six domination. My God. Michael Young gets the win for his team. And is that going to be the site we see next week? We will see as we end our broadcast for the evening. Thank you for joining us.